stay all night. I can't. Look, to hell with the scandal. Chappie. Australia's own Mrs. Miller mustn't blot her copybook. Dead right. You must resent her sometimes. Who? Mrs. Miller. All this fuss isn't fair. It isn't fair. Big banners in country towns saying good on your chubby and little girls presenting me with posies of flowers. As so long as they don't present me with any posies. You do know what I mean. And her pilot, Captain Lancaster. Do you love me? Yes. You're going to marry me? Yes. And that's all that matters. You must put a stop to that. Put a stop to it? How? You are his father, Edward. Go out there and tell him to come home. To Australia? It is not the end of the world. It takes six weeks by ship. There's a P&O steamer leaving Southampton next Friday. Perhaps Anne should be the one to go. I can't leave the children. Besides, he's obsessed by that woman. All Anne has received is a, re a request for a divorce. I hardly think she'd achieve much. We were all persuaded to approve of the partnership. Each for our own reasons. Let's not waste time with recriminations. We are trying to save your marriage. You're quite sure, are you, that I want it saved? I am quite sure the church you belong to will not tolerate divorce. Don't be foolish. The children need a father. He belongs with you. Whatever we feel, we're all agreed, surely. We must end his association with Mrs. Miller. Uh, I'll make a booking on the next ship. I already have. Mrs. Miller or not? You bet! Then go and give her help at ten bob. I can't understand. What, Father? It was your flight. You flew the plane, yet all they talk about is Mrs. Miller. I wish you'd cabled me you were coming. Perhaps you wouldn't have been here to meet me if I had. I could have saved you a long sea voyage. Billy, I made a comment and you haven't given me an answer. This venture of yours has been taken over by that woman. Don't refer to her like that. I didn't come all this way to evade the issue. She's used you, made herself famous at your expense. Now you listen to me. Are we lost? Bert Hinkler beat me in a light aircraft, which makes me second best, and nobody gives a damn. But they love Chubby. She's the first woman to make the flight and an Australian, so we've cashed in on it. Barnstorming our way across the country while she gives her lectures. It's paid as well. Paid her? You're just a chauffeur. Try and make me angry, Father. It won't work. From what I hear, you, you change the magic lantern slides at her lectures and collect the tickets. Is that true? Come back to England with me. That's what I came to ask you. I can't. Why, you'll have a reputation there as a flyer. You could do well. I can't leave Chubby. Just sheer senseless infatuation. If so, it's my business. And mine. It's your mother's and your wife's. 
Certainly your children's. Do you know that we send Anne a third of all our earnings? Yes. Chubby's insisted on that. Clever woman. Clever, dangerous woman. She'll ruin you. I don't think we can discuss this. She has a husband. Do you think I don't know we're breaking all the social rules? That if this gets out, the press will destroy us? Do you think we're not aware of the hurt we're causing the people we love? Then respect their feeling. You respect mine. She's given me a new world, a new kind of life. I'm happy. Do you know what that means, Father? I'm alive. God, am I alive? What will you do? Ask Anne again for a divorce. And uh, Mrs. Miller? Her husband has agreed to talk it over. Whatever they may decide, Billy, you will not get a divorce. What? I can assure you of that. Your mother has persuaded Anne it would be unwise. Unwise? For the rest of our lives? What God has joined, let no man put asunder. I'm in love, Father. And anyone who tries to put us asunder, God help him. Or her. God forgive you for your blasphemy! I'll catch the first ship home. There's clearly no point in my remaining here. To my good news. To your good news. Whatever it is. Well, drink first and then I'll tell you. Keith has agreed to a divorce. It takes two years, but the machinery's been set in motion. Desertion, he says. Desertion is best, according to Keith, because it's more discreet. He was really very friendly about it all. Well, darling, aren't you glad? Of course. So, here's to desertion. And discretion. And us, forever. And America. What? The USA. Place where money grows on trees, so they say. So what about it? In Australia, I'm a back number. Mrs. Miller's little helper. But in America, it seems I'm known. I've had an offer. You've had. All right. We've had. If you want to leave all this and come with me. Bill, you sneaky bugger. You knew all along and you didn't tell me. <laughs> Yo! 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 Me! <laughs> On behalf of the management of the Hall Aircraft Company, I want to welcome British ace Bill Lancaster and his lovely co-pilot. We're going to fly our new aircraft across the Atlantic. Let's celebrate the signing of the contract with a drink. <laughs> What's your pleasure, Mrs. Miller? I thought you had prohibition in America. And so we do, ma'am. So we do. Is this the suite of that intrepid air ace, Captain Lancaster? Would you be by any chance his lovely co-pilot? Oh, not tonight. I'm room service. Could I interest you in something dreadfully illegal? Oh, Speakeasy bubbly. I think prohibition makes drinking more fun. I'll drink to that. To us? Us. Room service and the air ace. Bloody of copper. You <laughs> crazy fool. You're going to marry me? Has said anything? Not yet. But she will. She must. You wait until she does harm. Then ask me.
Yes? Oh, uh, no. Uh, tell him I'm in, uh, I'm in conference. Excuse me, sir. You can't go in there. He's in conference. Sir! Forgive me disturbing your conference, but this won't take long. Bill, I'm sorry. So am I. A while back, we were all such good friends. Oh, don't be like that. Where's the lovely lady? She took her American pilot's license this morning. She passed. Great. That girl flies like an angel. Gets better all the time. So we fulfilled our part of the deal. When's the plane ready for the Atlantic flight? Like I, like I told you before, it's been delayed. Hmm. So has my paycheck. Yes. Well, I guess now you're here, you'd, uh, you'd better sit down and let me explain. Fired. No, not fired. Particularly said I wasn't fired. But they've cancelled the Atlantic project. Well, the word is delayed. But it means cancelled. Yes. And taken you off the payroll. Mm-hmm. Sort of about that thing they laughingly call a contract. Well, Mr. Hall said to read the small print, to be sure and read it. So, first things first, we get the hell out of this expensive dump. Oh, very good class dump, you must admit. That's a wonderful dump. Remember it wherever we're going. We're going to California. We are. There's a place called Hollywood, where they make films. Weeks ago, we were made an offer. Today, I cabled acceptance. Film stars? No. Stunt pilots. $1,000 a week between us. Oh, Bill, but that's a fortune. Better still, we've leased a plane. We're going to fly east to west across America and break the record on the way. Oh, that a boy. <laughs> he needs a Holy Grove company. Mm -hmm. Mr. Marcus, these folks say they have an appointment. Hi. I guess you'd be Captain Lancaster. Yes, and this is my partner, Mrs. Miller. Ma'am, I heard on the radio you had a big welcome in San Francisco. So, uh, Mr. Marcus, we've been trying to reach you by telephone all week. The phone's disconnected. So's the electricity and the water supply. I know you've flown across the country. And you've got my signed offer in your pocket. Employing us as stunt pilots. They repossess my airplanes. So sue me. But, I warn you, there's a long line. Look, I'm sorry. What can I do? I just phoned my boy in college and told him to get his ass out of there. Who wants college when they pulled the plug on Wall Street? Great shame. You're just what I wanted. We could have made some great pictures. He wishes us all a Merry Christmas. They're in Detroit. It seems the instructing job in Chicago didn't eventuate, so now they're in Detroit. He doesn't say, but I think things are quite desperate. It's worse than it does now. It's forty dollars for us. Twenty to send to your wife. Chubby, what the hell's the matter? I know times are tough. There are millions out there without a job with the price of their next meal. It's not like you to be this down in the mouth. I read her letter. Anne's letter. I know I shouldn't have, but I read it. She's not going to give you a divorce. 
It's been a lie all these years. She'll never give you a divorce. I've tried. Well, one day soon I'm going to be free, but you'll never be. Every damn day for months it's been a lie. Every lousy, stinking day. It makes no difference to us. You love me. I mean, you know I do. Oh, so damn much you couldn't even tell me the truth. Chubby, don't do this. Please don't. Give me time. You can't expect me to wait forever. I promise it won't be much longer. Just time to work things out. With who, for God's sakes? With Mother. And Anne. Just don't deceive me again. Don't keep things from me. We are partners, after all. Joint bank account, double bed, income split three ways. You insisted on that. Not for her, for the kids. And I still insist, which doesn't mean I like it. There's a thing called the Powder Puff Derby. Ladies air races. That's right. I've entered. All the best female flyers in the United States. And I intend to beat the shit out of a lot of them, including Amelia Earhart. <laughs> Right to Anne. Well, perhaps you'll consider a divorce if there's a decent financial settlement. Tell her there's going to be more money. A lot more. Forget about it, and I can't. She was 23 years old. You know, the first press report said it was you. For two hours. 
Two hours. Thirdly insane. I want you to promise not to race again. What? I can't bear it. I'm terrified. Every single minute you're in the air. Would you mind telling me how we'll survive? I'll find a job. Oh, you know damn well there aren't any. I'm not here in Chicago. Hmm. Go to the West Coast. The whole of America is full of unemployed flyers looking for jobs. I'll find something. Maybe we could start another lecture too. <laughs> what do I do? Work the magic lantern. Mrs. Miller. Sorry, I don't think we've met. My name is Hayden Clark. Well, that means absolutely nothing to me. Please don't be annoyed. I wanted to express my admiration. Believe me, I think you're the best flyer, male or female, in the entire country. That's uh, very kind of you, Mr. Clark, but quite ridiculous. The best. And the prettiest. And your story should be told. I'm a magazine writer. If you were to entrust yourself to me, I could ghostwrite your life story. And we could make a fortune. Thanks for the same, Mr. Clark, but uh, I'm really not interested. Don't make a hasty decision, Mrs. Miller. Take your time. Think it over. were filled to overflowing. Public soup kitchens ladled out to thin lions of the hungry. The first term of newly elected President Franklin Delano Roosevelt saw the battle against unemployment and poverty renewed with fresh vigor. The new administration faced the issue of a citizenry reduced to the lowest levels of hopelessness and despair. carrying out our plan. You people must have faith. You must not be stampeded by rumors or guesses. Let us unite in vanishing fear. In New Jersey, a city mourns the untimely death of Marvel Crossan, brave young aviatrix killed in Arizona while competing in the Powder Puff Derby. An all-woman air race, which future is now doubtful following Marvel's tragic accident. Hundreds of people pay tribute to the young woman whose courage was an example to all American flyers. Take my hand, lead me on, let me stay, I am tired, I am weak, I am that was coming. Ladies air races are fun, but not when 23-year-old girls got killed. The Nans is over. A lot of things are over. Why the hell did you say a thing like that? Bill, one thing we never did was fool ourselves. What's really left? I wish I had some money. I'd loan it to you. Cut it out, Jack. I could offer you a job. Well, what kind of job? Uh, in the office. Administration director. I, uh, I need an administration director. <laughs> like hell you do. Well, we both know I'm not a desk man.
No chance they'll start the powder puff derbies again. No. What will you two do? Try to stay together. I need a plane, Jack. Can you tell me how to beg, borrow, or steal or What kind of plane? A Lockheed monoplane. When it's in New York, our niece, but Jack Maddox can get it for us. How? What with the owner's a friend? The lease is up. How about Miami? Miami? Oh, well, we're known down there. We could arrange charter flights. Oh, give lessons? Maybe even start a small passenger service to Florida Keys and places like that. Miami's perfect. Shall we? Well, there's only one problem. How the hell do we get to Miami? How do we pay for our rent or any other damn thing? I've got some money. Enough to clear our debts, buy a car, drive down to Florida. We were almost broke, you said. I cabled my father. I lied to them. I told them I was coming home. That I needed the money to take care of things here. After that, I was leaving you and coming back alone. They sent me the money. I never lied to them before. Even as a child. I'm sorry. It keeps us together. Well, nothing else matters. <laughs> to us. Us. Mrs. Miller, Mrs. Miller, telephone. Thank you. Do you have any mail for me, please? Hello? Mrs. Miller. Mr. Clark. No, I'm tired. Don't now, don't try and tell me this is accidental. On the contrary. Have you thought over my suggestion? I have magazines interested. Maybe even a publisher for a book. The answer is no. Besides, we're leaving for Miami. Coincidence. It's my favorite town. I'll be seeing you. I don't think so, Mr. Clark. You're really not my type. Goodbye. What was that all about? Nothing important. You ready? Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. It's wonderful. Perfect. Mm, I thought so. I love it. Oh, good. Then that's settled, eh? I don't think so, Bill. Well, the house is splendid. It seems that we're unsuitable. What? I, I didn't say that, Mrs. Miller. It's all very unfortunate. What is? Well, go on. Tell him. Well, you aren't married. No, that's right. The company won't rent to two people who are not married. It isn't me. It's the company. No offence. I take great offence. I'd like you to have the place, but... We have standards, rules. I'm really embarrassed about this. You've been well-known people and all. Mrs. Miller's upset. She had a heart set on the place. It is out of season. I don't suppose there are too many takers for a house like this. No. 
forty-five dollars a month. I said forty. Twelve months at forty-five dollars, say six months in advance. Well, of course, there'll be three of us living here. Mrs. Miller did tell you. No, she didn't say that. Three of you. Our partner, Jack Maddox of Continental West Air Charter, he'll be flying our Lockheed monoplane down here and moving in to chaperone us, so to speak. No, she didn't say that. Well, probably thought it irrelevant, but of course it's not. No, indeed. Well, that should satisfy your company. I, I would imagine so. Forty-five dollars a month then? Uh, yes. Six months in advance? Yes. Um... Perhaps if you wouldn't mind, we could make it three months. All right. Don't drink so much. She made me feel dirty. Do you realize this is the first home we've ever had? That's why it was so important. The very first. After all those hotel rooms. Bloody years of hotel rooms. And bloody years of sending money to Anne and waiting. Cut it out. Why should I feel dirty? I'm decently divorced at long last. We both know now you'll never be. Will you quit drinking? I'm damned if I will. It's rot guts. I like rot guts. Well, suit yourself. Well, it's time I did. Must have been insane getting mixed up with you in the first place. Just think back. What did you ever do? Will you stop it? I raised the money. I got the sponsors, the official backing. I even got a divorce. Oh, it always comes back to that, doesn't it? It comes back to you having no guts. What? No courage. And I don't mean in the air. I mean on the bloody ground. God, if I don't act, nothing happens. You haven't even got the courage to stand up to that ridiculous mother of yours. I prefer you didn't insult her. There's no need to. She makes a big enough jackass of herself without help from anybody. Hello? Well, Jack, at last. Well, we're fine, thanks. Waiting to hear from you. What? What was that about the plane? I see. I'm sorry. Yes, well, thanks for letting us know. Goodbye. That Lockheed Maddox promised us. It crashed. The pilot was killed. He said he'd try and get us another one, but he said not to count on it. Everything else grows in this garden. Why can't we grow an English rose bush? Maybe it's the wrong time of the year. Maybe you use the wrong type of horse shit. How would I know? All right. I'm sorry. There's some mail for you inside. Anything from Maddox? No, just a few unpaid bills and a letter from your wife.
sorry as hell, Bill. If I could employ anyone, it'd be you and Chubby. You know that. Oh, yes, of course. Look, I'll keep my ear to the ground if I hear anything. Well, thank you. It doesn't have to be a flying job, by the way. I dig ditches. Absolutely no way that anyone can identify that chicken. Who is it? Hail Graham. Lancaster? Yes. Well, thank you. Sorry. Thanks. Regret long delay. Have acquired Curtis Robin aircraft. Ready Chicago Thursday. Good old Jack Maddox after all. <laughs> There's only one problem. How do I pay the fare to Chicago? I said we'd meet up in Miami. It's done a lot of work and it's not exactly in mint condition. Oh, it flies, doesn't it? You've been going crazy down there. Yeah, well, I kind of figured that. That'll be a call to Chubby. Hello? Beg your pardon? What do you mean there's no answer? Well, there must be an answer. Yes, well, will you try again, please? Hey, take it easy. You'll be flying back tomorrow. She must be in the house. Where else could she be? Thank you. She sure as hell means everything to you, doesn't she? Well, this is where I live. Mm. Or to put it another way, the house of which I am the mistress. Do you know where the mistress belongs, Hayden? Hmm? The mistress belongs between the master 
and the mattress. You ask the real estate lady. She'll tell you. I'm going to write your life story and we're going to make a fortune. Did I mention that? Several times. I'm also crazy about you. Have I said that before? Only uh, twice. And you've got to stop. Dear Hayden, we can't. I'm drunk and I shouldn't be. And we can't. At least you promised to see me again. Did I? You did. When? Tomorrow. Bill's back tomorrow. So much the better. Lancaster, Hayden Clark. Hi, it's a pleasure. And Trevi says you want to write her life story. I hope so. I also hope we're going to be friends. It's a great story. It has to be told. That the kid from Perth who became the first woman to fly to Australia. And how this same kid became one of the world's top pilots. It's a hell of a story. It's a real heart warmer. Has everything. I hate to be commercial, Hayden. But what kind of an advance do you expect? Cash up front? Mm-hmm. No hope of that, Bill. Not with this lousy depression. Oh. But I have two publishers, and both want to see the manuscript. I did get the impression, Hayden, you had a deal for the book. As good as. Once they see a few chapters, I know we're on a winner. Folks, it's time to know a little bit more about me, huh? Only right and proper. I'm 32 years old. I'm a graduate of Columbia University. I've been a staff writer on newspapers and magazines. But right now, well, this minute, I'm out of the job and flat broke, like many of my ilk. Most of our ilk. Flyers and writers. The American dream gone bust and left us without a prayer. But it is a great story. Look, I want Chubby to talk, to unfold. I'll write it from the nuances of her voice. First person. Just letting it all flow. Uh, to do this, I need to spend as much time with her as possible. How? We can't pay. Bill, don't insult me. I mean, not a cent. We've got a second-hand plane on lease, with a worn-out engine and no contracts, plus a bitch of a landlady who'll soon be around for more rent. That's about the sum total of our situation, isn't it, Chubby? Mm, I'm afraid so. So what kind of an arrangement can we make? Well, these deals are usually an equal split, if you agree. 50-50 on the final proceeds. That sounds fair. How long will it take? Two or three months. We're just talking to Chubby. Yeah. Well, there is one suggestion I can make. What's that? That you stay here in the house with us. That way you'll be able to save money and spend more time with Chubby. Well, the sooner the book's written, the sooner we all have some folding money to share, so 
I accept, with thanks. Try duck a l'orange. Or Peking duck. Oh. It's very tasty. Or Bombay duck. Bombay duck's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd settle for duck shoe. I'm starving. to the Miami Bridge Club. You won. We certainly did. Hayden plays a mean game. And in addition, for you. Oh, he's beautiful. He is tomorrow's dinner. Never. While I'm around. I don't care how bad things are or how hungry we get. His name is Oscar Wilde and nobody is going to eat him. That's settled. Captain Lancaster. Yes. I'm Commander Tankerel, U.S. Naval Reserve. My associate, Mr. J.F. Russell. How do you? Can I help you? I'm the president of Latin American Airways. I'm sorry, I've never heard of it. We're a small new company with some big plans. Very big, Captain. We need aircraft. We need you. Where shall I start? Far away Australia. A small country town. Your father? A bank manager. Your mother? A church-going lady. How did you do in school? I was expelled for smoking. Wonderful. Then? Um, I was married when I was 18, and that was a mess. I was divorced last year. So am I. What? Divorced, or about to be. I didn't even know you were married. Anyway, what's that got to do with my life story? Absolutely nothing. I thought you'd like to know. Then when I was 23, I went to London, where I met Bill, and he was trying to plan a flight. Shouldn't you be taking some notes or something? I have a very retentive memory. Don't do that. What's wrong? Just stop it. You don't sleep with Lancaster, did you ever? That's none of your business. Hey, I'm your biographer, remember? Bill, I didn't hear the car. I ran out of petrol. 
gas on the way home. I didn't have any money. What is it? I think, old girl, we might have had a bit of luck at long last. As I was saying, Mrs. Miller, we have a network of contacts from Mexico to the Caribbean. I'm a personal friend of the governor of Bermuda. Well, you certainly give big parties for a uh, small airline commander. Well, that's Mrs. Russell's department. She and JF have taken this house for the summer. I know we're going to be great friends. Drink up, folks. It's high class and comes with a personal guarantee not to send us blind. <laughs> <laughs> My husband knows more bootleggers than anyone in Florida. <laughs> Can uh, we talk business for a moment? What exactly is the deal with Latin American? We hire your plane, ma'am. You or Captain Lancaster fly. Yes, but the uh, plane needs repairs. We'll consider a down payment. Five hundred dollars? Too high in these difficult times. We'll negotiate. It'll all be legal, a binding contract with our attorney. We'll have to know what kind of cargoes we'll be carrying. We fly freight. Just normal cargoes. I'm a cousin of you, a Senator Myron Randolph. There can be nothing untoward, sir, on that you have my word as an officer and a gentleman. Now, let's go enjoy the party. Certainly. That's all. You trust those guys? Definitely not. Dodgy. What, Tankrell, Commander U.S. Navy? Very dodgy. No choice. Need the money. Too true. Well, chaps? Yeah. Good night. Night. This agreement is between Latin American Airways on the one part and Captain Lancaster and Mrs. Miller as co-lessees of the aircraft on the other part, whereby the lessees will provide and pilot the plane in places and at times as directed by the airways for such length of time as the parties here to agree or may deem to be advisable. A sum of $200 will be advanced for essential repairs and all expenses will be paid by the airways, after accounting for which each partner so named in the agreement shall receive one-sixth of the net profits. Which we predict will be considerable. Hear, hear. I'm leaving for Arizona tonight to fix cargo. If you're ready to sign, Captain Lancaster. Ma'am? Certainly. What about that two hundred dollars? We'll write your check. We'll take cash. I think it should go through the books. I think it's payment on signing. What do you think, Mr. Houston? That is technically correct, Mrs. Miller. In a partnership, the first qualification to establish is mutual trust. So establish it by paying us $200.
I uh, happen not to have the company checkbook. Uh, however, Jeff... You're a businesswoman, ma'am. I appreciate that. What I'd appreciate, Mr. Russell, is the color of your money. One hundred dollars. You'll have to wait for the rest. A hundred dollars to show good faith. And our check to follow. Unless you prefer to tear up the agreement. Maybe it'll turn out all right. Maybe. Captain Lancaster, Mrs. Miller, how nice to see you both. I know it slipped your mind, but there's a matter of this month's rent. Yes. I wouldn't come bothering you, but it's the company. They insist, you see. Thank you. doing? Coffee? Out here? They cut off the electricity. Where's Hayden? Sleeping off a heavy night. Bill, he's hopeless. You need the book, the money. You or I can't write it. Yes, but he won't work. Well, maybe when I'm away. If J.F. Russell ever wires to say he's found a cargo. I think I should fly with you. That doesn't make sense. But we always flew together. We were a team. Not for a long time. Well, don't you like Hayden? It's not that. I just thought it'd be nice to go along. It would. But we need the book. I have no faith in these people and their tin pot airline. You'll persuade him to work once I've gone. like she's rolling sweet. She's not. We need new bearings, but we can't afford them. Good news at last, Bill. JF called from Arizona. We leave tomorrow. We leave when you have the money to fill this plane with gasoline. And when I have the money to pay the electricity bill and enough to leave Chubby while I'm away. Bill, relax. Don't worry. I'm not worrying. I'm also not leaving. It'll be arranged. I give you my word as a naval officer. Well, that's another thing. I have friends in Washington. You're not listed on any naval reserve. How dare you? How dare you check up on me? There was a fire in the records office. My papers were lost. Here is $40. It's all I can manage. Take it or leave it. Just remember, you sign contract. It's legal. Afraid she's right. To bust that agreement, you'd have to take them to court. When I write contracts, son, they stay writ. A liar 
draws up documents don't mean he likes or trusts his clients. You better take this in case of trouble. And be careful, it's loaded. Please let me come to the airfield. No. I'll be back in a few weeks. I'm worried. We'll be in New Orleans by tomorrow night. Arizona by Sunday, if all goes well. I just wish I was coming with you. We've been over that. Just promise me you won't be talked into anything crooked. How do you feel? Hung over. Good party last night. Hayden, I, I wanted this chance to talk with you. Alone. I want you to know I trust you. I trust you with Chubby. In a way, that means I trust you with my life. I love her. Always have, always will. We've been partners and lovers for years now. I die for her. Do you understand? Yeah. And don't let her drink too much. When she drinks, she goes wild. It's a bit like you, Hayden. I'll look after her. I know you will. I hope to God this trip of mine will be worthwhile. And you write that book. Don't waste your talent. Work hard, okay? Bill, I'm on your team. 